What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Burly Fishing Channel. Got our super fun video for you today. Got a little bit of fish catches, big fish catch on this one. Uh, so we got some on the water and we also have some tips and tricks. This one specifically is gonna be three things that you really need to stop doing when you're cold water fishing. Before we get into all that, before we get into the knowledge, the news, the details, all the fun stuff that comes later on, I wanna say thank you so much for checking out this channel. Thank you if you haven't already for hitting the subscribe button, uh, hitting the notification bell, or I guess you ring the bell and you smash the like button. So whatever, do all that, hit all the things, and hopefully, if you're into like podcasts, YouTube live stream, anything like that, please come check out the Burley Fishing Podcast. We stream live every single Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We have awesome people from the fishing industry. We talk about fun stuff. We have a blast and we love to talk to you guys in chat. So please come check that out. Now, let's talk about those three things you need to stop doing when you are fishing cold water. Just in case you guys didn't know, we are in Michigan. Jeff and I are, we do most of our fishing in Michigan, which means we're pretty familiar with cold water. It is check march 27th and it is hecking cold still we had some snow yesterday had a little bit of snow this morning still uh, and typically we don't really get into like warmer water starting to get warmer until april we did hit our first open water boat trip about a week ago and we had a decent day sun was out thank you uh, and we got the boats out for the first time now we went through i mean the water was 45 degrees ish uh, up to about 48 at its highest point now a lot of these videos you'll see like you know make sure you find the warmer water here's like the 10 baits to throw or the best three ever made or whatever we're gonna avoid some of that i want to show you guys what we saw on the water that day that i either want you to not do or want you to pay attention uh, because we didn't do some things that led to some success for us now the first thing you'll notice in this video we did not get up super early uh my kind of claim to fame is that i'm fine getting up early i'll get up at 4 a.m and go fishing just so that i can hit that you know pre-sunrise water that is like you know like spring like full-on spring and summer and you know early fall like that is my jam i'm happy to do it i i think hitting that early window is super important because i think you're seeing a ton of fish activity that you really want to get and then there's kind of a lull and then you get like the midday and then there's another lull you know depending on the day goes so i'm always like yes get to that early water one thing i want you to stop doing is stop stressing out about that what i want you to think about is midday is okay Midday is okay. That means it's okay to sleep in. Go ahead, have a nice breakfast. Make yourself some flap jacks. Get yourself an extra cup of coffee. Take your time, no stress. No need to hit that first light, extra cold stuff. For me, right around 9, 10 o'clock, I think is a good time to be making your first cast. I think you're gonna see that there's not as many uh, windows where the bite is going to be like on fire and there realistically are not when the window is open there's not going to be quite as many bites when that water is cold yes you're starting to see bait fish you know get targeted by bass um, and they're certainly going to do that and they are going to start chasing some faster presentations that's that's a thing for sure however they're not doing it quite as much at least in my experience so for me i'm not worried about getting out there at 6 a.m and as you can see in this video it was bright, it was sunny. Um, I was fishing in a hoodie and I was like very comfortable and super happy. We were actually taking layers off as we were uh, driving out to the spot. So do not stress too much about getting to the ramp early. Midday is okay. I'm coining that one, that one's mine now. Our number two tip, like do not feel like you need to stay in the same spot. Now, Jeff and I fell into this trap for like the majority of the day. Like right now, you're seeing that, you know, we saw a lot of fish on sonar. Tough casting conditions, but I am seeing a ton of fish. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they're, they're over here. Looks like they're in about 10 feet of water. Cause I see like a ton of fish at 10 feet. Saw fish on the graph and spent like an hour, hour and a half of like a four to six hour day just trying to target those fish and having zero success. You're just seeing cast, cast, cast. No fish, no fish, no fish. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Still seeing a fish, seeing bait fish, which is what you're looking for. Just not able to get those fish to bite. Now, that could mean that the window's just not open. They're not biting, they're not having it. It could mean you have the wrong bait. Absolutely. Just chuck and duck, like throw a couple baits at them, see if you can get some looks, see if you get some bites. Maybe you're seeing some fish move around. That would be great. But really, don't feel like you have to catch the fish that you see on the graph at that one time. 
feel free to move around. And, and you can see that, you know, Jeff was basically in this video, like convincing me. He's like, please, can we go to another spot? I'm like, yeah, but I see fish right here. Yeah, I feel good about all our choices. I just don't feel like the fish give a shoot. <sighs> okay. Let's get out of here, dude. Let's just skip over to four mile and give it an hour. You want to try and do the creek and just make this like a suffering video? This is just not happening. So I'm down to hit the creek across or drive because I feel like they'll hit the cranks over there. I don't know. It's probably just purely previous confidence speaking, <laughs> which is about to be shattered into a billion pieces. I'm going to drown my buddy and then I'll be gone. <laughs> so I was thinking we go hit that lake for a minute. You want to try and cut through or no? I mean, I'm definitely done on this lake. So let's skate. This is my error. This is something that, you know, I want you guys to learn from my mistake and don't do. And you know how I know that both my tip number one of, you know, midday is okay. And we're talking about, hey, like, you know, sometimes the window's just gonna open and you're, the bites are gonna, you know, be fire. And then number two, don't stay in the same place. They kind of coincided uh, on this trip. Jeff and I did eventually, after I finally conceded to listen, decided to switch lakes. Yes, it was a pain in the butt, but we basically said, look, grab all your stuff, you know, pull the kayak out, throw it in the truck, do not take anything down, don't disassemble, like put the rods down for safety, but otherwise, like I wore my PFD, my camera and everything, and we drove to the, to the next lake, it was a short stop, got out, you know, made it onto the water, had a little bit of a pedal, but still, like right when we got to the spot, I mean like right when we got to this new spot, I think the window opened up and we were on water that was a lot warmer. There was like a almost five degree difference. We were in like 42 to 45, or I think it was like 44 to 46 on the first lake. When we got to the second lake, it was like 48, 49 degrees. So yes, we found that warmer water, which is awesome. And then I think that bite window opened up because like right off the bat, Jeff catches a big old fish. So I'm gonna have to find the bull unless they're just out here roaming, which they could be. Got him. Dude, decent, decent. Yo, he's a tank. Don't turn on me. Come on, dude. Got him. Yo, it's a giant, dude. Yo! Holy dude. Yo, this might be like a six. I'm not kidding. Oh, dude! Ready? No, not even? Are you kidding me? Four. We're gonna need another scale. Four, three, hold. Four, three. It's, it's Four, close. Two. Four, two. Yep. I'll take it. All right, so that's two scale readings. Dude, the mouth, this is the a mouth. six. The mouth. This is gonna be a six. That, that should be a one figure. Holy crap, dude. Wow. <laughs> Bro. And it just keeps on giving. Oh my gosh. A super nice fish. It was only four pounds and like oh, four pounds and dude, a four pound fish this early, that skinny, that with a mouth, the one that that had. Hacking nice fish and it was in like the first 10 casts. So yeah, don't be afraid to switch spots. Midday is okay. Midday is okay. That's number one. Sleep in. Number two, just go find another spot. Don't be married to the fish that the first fish that you see on graph. Be willing to explore that lake and start looking for that slightly warmer water and just keep moving until that bite window opens up. Just try and stay on the fish if you can, but don't feel like you have to catch the first one you see on the graph. That's also something that is like, I need to work on this entirety of the rest of my career. It's like my, one of my biggest faults, I have many, but that's one that I need to work on. So I need to listen to Jeff. I said it, it's on camera. I already hate this video. <laughs> now tip number three, do not, and I mean like do not be afraid to fish shallow. You know, it's important to fish where the 
where the fish are looking, which is where bait fish are. Yes, fish are gonna be down low and they, they are going to be there, but you will find some up shallow. You'll notice that that fish that Jeff caught, that fish that Jeff caught was probably in two and a half, maybe three feet of water. And he caught it on a bladed jig. Like, what? It kind of defies a lot of what you hear. You're like, uh, jerk bait, you know, twitch, twitch, pause, wait 10 seconds, you know, whatever. That's certainly a great way to fish. Suspended fish, you know, act like a suspended bait fish. That's absolutely a great way to fish. It's, it's like one of the top ways. It, it, I'm not contesting that, but what I will say is don't be afraid to absolutely burn a bait up shallow. A bladed jig is a great option. So a chatter bait or a bladed jig, just like this one right here, uh, is one that you're gonna wanna, is one that you can grab. I like to do one in a half ounce or, or a, a three eighths. That's kind of like my standard two sizes. This one happens to be by Battle Baits. I actually did a video on this like I think last Friday when this one drops on a Monday um, on this bait. Go check that video out if you want to see more on this bait. It is a heckin' cool bait. But feel free to do that. That's a great option. Another great option, one that maybe you wouldn't think to fish of in this way. And that bait is the lipless crankbait. There is no, I mean, honestly, there's really no place where this is not gonna serve you very well. But one of the things that people don't do often enough is burn these super fast, like I'm talking like, 8.1 type eight, you know, ratio, gear ratio, bait caster speed, burning one through shallow cover. Somebody who does this really well that I, you know, really appreciate is Josh Moody on Instagram. Um, go check him out. It, you know, he preaches it constantly and you see him catching some gigantic fish burning a lipless through shallow cover. Now there's a lot of people who do it, but I just like watching him do it because he's, he's all about it and he does it all the time. But realistically, like this, this is a great bait for burning through shallow cover. One that again would surprise you. This is also an awesome bait when they're chasing stuff. So when the bite was on, this is the bait that I went to. I got a fish. Look at me. Yay. Look at me, I'm a guy. Guys, a fish. Me? No. Yes. Come on, come on, you little dork. There you go. Oh, I went and got him on the lower gill. Sorry, dude. All right, my man. First uh, spring bass, little baby. But it counts. Can't believe that fish was sitting there. Oh, got him. Yeah. Yep. Ah, and my boot. All right, that's two. Well, guys. Hey, we're back. Did I call it or did I call it? Oh, this one feels good. Pike. Oh no, it's bass. Nice fish. Swallowed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, that cho Ow, choked it. Yo. That's a nice fish. Bleeding, so she's going, but that's a really nice fish. Yes. Um, this is one that you can yo-yo deep and bring fish out and it's one that can you can attack top middle and bottom of the water column So those two baits are great. They're great moving baits But regardless of what the bait is all I'm saying is my tip number three do not be afraid to fish shallow There's a lot of different ways to do it You can do it with a jig you do it with like a moving bait like a bladed jig or like I said a lipless crankbait Silent square bill is an awesome option for when that water's super cold and just starting to warm up Those are all great options just don't be afraid to throw them shallow. There are fish there. And in, in this case, on this day, biggest fish of the day, absolutely. One of the biggest fish, honestly, size-wise, that you might see all year, that Jeff and I might see all, see all year, was caught in like three feet of water. Don't be afraid. That's all we're saying. Now again, these are not like rules of the road. I'm not saying always fish shallow, you know, always wake up at noon to fish. Like that's not the deal. But what I am saying is this. If you wanna sleep in, tip number one, it definitely applies. Midday is okay. Go ahead. You don't need to be there at dawn. So that's my that's my first tip. So stop feeling you need to do that. The second thing you need to stop doing right now, and this just doesn't apply to cold water. I think this applies to all water. But my tip tip number two thing you need to stop doing. Don't feel like you need to stay in one spot. You're gonna see fish on the graph. You're gonna see bait fish on the graph. 
if the if the bite window's not open, they're, they ain't biting, especially in cold water. Like lower your expectations on the number of bites. And I hate to say that because like I want everybody everywhere to catch fish all day every day, but you gotta lower your expectations a little bit in cold water. You're not gonna, every fish is not gonna react to you in, a, in the way that you want. It's just not gonna happen. Change your expectations and understand like, okay, either the window's not open or these fish aren't having it and throw a couple baits at them. Certainly you may have the wrong bait, but like throw a couple different styles of bait at them. Throw something slow, like a jerk bait, throw something a little faster, maybe a square bill or a deep diving crank bait. And if they don't react to it and you're like, you know what? I'm just not seeing any movement. Move on, on to the next one. And maybe as we did in this case, on to the next lake. And maybe the whole day will turn around like it did for us. And number three, like we just said, don't be afraid to fish shallow. It's okay. I promise you there are going to be some fish there. I'm not saying that all the fish will be shallow and don't fish deep. I'm not saying that. But please stop being afraid to fish shallow. Don't pass over, don't be so fast to pass over that water. Go and check it out. All right, I hope that this video was fun for you, but more importantly, well, uh, let's scratch that. Equally importantly, I do hope that you learned something or at least picked up a little tip or a trick that you can take with you the next time you go and hit the water. Hopefully sometime around nine or 10 o'clock if your water is in the 45, 50 degree range. But sincerely, thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, we love our little Ned Rig Nerd community that we have begun to cultivate. So please, if you wanna join, uh, you can join us as a member. You can hit the subscribe button. We love to see that. You can smash the like button. You can ring the notification bell, or you can join us Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on our live stream, which streams on YouTube, or you can check us out as a podcast Anywhere that you get your podcast, just look up Burly Fishing Podcast. And we will see you, if not on a live stream, out on the water.